Here at the Four Boxes Diner, I like to talk about the notion of force multiplying, where information I provide to you allows you not only to be the smartest person in the room in your community, but also that you can do things to advance and protect our right to keep into arms and the rest of the United States Constitution. I have a really interesting idea that I want to share with you uh, in this video because I think it might help a lot of you be able to do things in your community to advance the ball for the Second Amendment. Stay tuned. Let's talk about it when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of the best-selling new book, Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. And if you're not following me on Twitter, at Four Boxes Diner, please do so. I think you'll learn a lot more about the Second Amendment there, in addition to the videos I put out here. Okay, folks, I have this really cool idea um, that I want to share with you. And I have a feeling that in the comments down below, you guys are a lot smarter than I am in many respects. And I have a feeling that you're going to be able to improve on this dramatically. I want to give you where I get this idea from, and then I'm going to give you the idea. If you think back in our history to 1988, when Governor Michael Dukakis was debating Vice President George H.W. Bush, there was a very famous question that was posed of Michael Dukakis in a presidential debate that year. And the question went like this. What if a criminal raped and murdered Michael Dukakis' wife, would Michael Dukakis, who had historically opposed the death penalty, support the death penalty in that case? Well, Michael Dukakis says he would not. But of course, that question and the answer really helped cost Michael Dukakis the election to President Bush I in 1988. So questions to your political opposites have a lot of power if they're the right questions. On a related note, you can't help notice, if you're on social media at all, of the hugely successful documentary, What is a Woman, by Matt Walsh of The Daily Wire. That was very powerful stuff, and it's gotten massive views. I don't even know how many views, but it's a huge number of views. Now, as to the Matt Walsh documentary, if you remember the title of it, of course, is What is a Woman? And what he did is he went around the world. In particular, he went into... Uh, protests and events for those in um, you know, the liberal communities by and large, and he would ask them the question of what is a woman? And he kept pressing them on this and very, you know, that's what he did. So I got thinking, is there something that Amer the American Second Amendment movement could do when, for example, we're walking down the street and there's like an anti-gun protest or, or anything like that, or there's maybe just a bunch of you know, liberals protesting something where you're, you, you know, you're there, or you go and you talk to them. I know a lot of people in the Second Amendment community will show up uh, to protest in favor of the you know, Second Amendment against gun control laws, and you know, there's a lot of interaction there between people that support gun control and those that support the right to keep arms under the United States Constitution. So I came up with a series of questions Probably you can all improve upon these, and you'll have to be able to work it out and you know, ask them in your own way. But here's, if, if I were dealing with or encountering sort of an anti-gun activist or a protester, I think these are some of the questions that I might ask in one form or another. The first thing I would say is a series of questions that I talked about, uh, or at least the concept at least, in my book in 2018 called Hashtag Duped. Uh, how the anti-gun lobby exploits the Parkland school shooting. If you haven't checked out Dupe, uh, a lot of good information in there in support of the right to keep arms. It's not a very long book uh, and a lot of good stuff in there. You may want to check it out on Amazon. Uh, one of the things I talked about is what is your plan? And specifically, when people have all this anti-gun rhetoric, um, I think you should ask them what is their plan. Specifically, here's the kind of thing I would be looking to ask them. I'd say, look, you know, if you saw a man with, you know, with a knife climbing through your daughter's bedroom, would you be willing to use a gun to prevent that man from attacking your daughter? If you were awoken in the middle of the night, would you feel more comfortable with or without a gun or with or without arms? Um, I would ask, how many of you are aware that the average time it takes for a police officer to show up in your specific community or in your state or in the country is 10 minutes or whatever it happens to be. And can we agree a lot of bad stuff can happen in that time period? Uh, I might also ask questions like, what if your car 
was carjacked with your baby in the car, what would you do to fight back and protect the baby? And the key is, what is their plan if they're confronted with these terrible situations? You know, if you're incapacitated and someone threatens to harm your children, what exactly is your plan in that case? Uh, if a dozen or so protesters descend upon your home and start kicking in doors and breaking windows, what exactly is your plan to protect yourself? Are you simply going to call the cops? What if the cops don't come in time? What is your plan in that instance? Again, if you're hiking and make it, maybe you talk about some of the nature stuff. Uh, if you're hiking in the woods uh, and you encounter a bear or a wolf, what is your plan? Uh, is there any way that you intend to fight back? Or are you just going to hope and pray to God that things work out? Again, likewise, if a coyote grabs your dog from your backyard and runs away, how are you going to stop the coyote? You can't run it down. What are you going to do? You can try to stop it or do nothing. Again, likewise, if you're trapped in a building with a mass shooter, yeah, you can you know, try to hide and run out the door, but what if that's not an option for you? What is your plan to fight back, or will you just not fight back? I think these are the kinds of questions that you know you can ask and, and refine and, and see how people react, because especially if you're, you know, you can even possibly film them, right? I think Matt Walsh did a great job. He had a film crew. Somebody was asking these good questions, and he captured all of it on tape. So it's not clear to me why, uh, you know, within the law and confines of ethics and law and all that kind of good stuff, whatever your community is and following your, you know, the First Amendment and, and again, all that law stuff uh, that has to be followed in compliance with whatever it is you're doing, wherever you are. But I think this is the sort of thing you could possibly even, you know, film and do a documentary yourself or put it on the Internet, whatever it is. People do this all the time. Yeah, I think you get the point. Uh, I think there's also a series of further thought experiments uh, that could be used in this context. For example, uh, you could ask someone, uh, hey, did you, uh, uh, how do you know if someone is trying to kill you? In other words, if they break and say, look, I just want your money. Well, how do you know that's, they're telling the truth? They've already decided to break into your home to say they want to steal your watch, your money, whatever it is. How do you know they don't intend to rape or rob you or, or murder you? I mean, how do you, why would you trust them if they've already broken into your home in the middle of the night and they say, I just want your money? Why would you trust them not to kill you? Like, you know, these are the kinds of questions I would ask. Again, I would also ask sort of more general questions like, does a woman have a right to defend herself with a gun against a man trying to rape her? You could also ask questions about, you know, why do you think some women reject firearms for self defense when they're usually much smaller and more frail? Uh, and more vulnerable to violent attacks than are most men. Uh, then you can ask questions like this. Well, what exactly is an assault weapon? What makes a firearm a self-defense weapon versus an assault weapon? What makes a rifle a self-defense, self-protection device versus an assault rifle or assault weapon? Um, and I would ask the same question about like, you know, household items. When is a knife a you know, a kitchen knife, and when does it become an assault knife? When is a car just the family car, and when does it become an assault car or an assault weapon used to run people over? You could ask people, well, when someone uses a car to run them over, is that an assault car? Again, these are the kinds of questions that you can ask people and potentially, under the law, film, uh, film them and get their reaction uh, if that's something you guys are interested in doing, there may be some you know, young filmmakers out there or documentary filmmakers that are interested in doing something like this. Uh, again, you don't have to. It could just be something that you, know, you want to try to persuade people. Maybe you don't even want to film it. You want to just talk to anti-gun protesters uh, in your community when they're, you know, then we're standing around and protesting, you may want to ask them some of these questions. Um, you can also then get into the question of, hey, how many violent criminals or how many criminals are released every week from the local prison, from the local jail, for the states in the, from the prisons in your state, from the federal prison system nationwide? You can grab these statistics either locally from the state or at the national level, and you can pick it as you ask the questions like, did you know that, you know, every day 5,000 or whatever it is, 5,000 people are let out of prison who've committed violent crimes. Did you know that? Um, things like this. You know, you can also ask, do you really think that people that are willing to commit murder, rape, and robbery are going to respect any gun control laws? And again, a lot of it is not just asking the question. You want to capture and get their reaction. If they're unwilling to debate, okay, that's, that's their choice as Americans. Uh, but the fact that they're unwilling to debate or unwilling to answer these basic questions in some ways is a win for the Second Amendment community as I see it. But again, uh, these are legitimate questions on a ma major issue of public policy and constitutional law. So I think it's all fair game as I see it. Uh, and again, continue to ask questions about why should... I'd be denying my right to self-defense because some psychopath misuses a gun. Uh, because then you could carry on to say, uh, if, if, if some media organization is sued for billions of dollars for committing defamation, does that mean that you and I 
should not have the right to free speech because we want to restrict it and protect people from being defamed, or how should we handle that? Uh, and again, I think these are, again, the sorts of things that we can all go through. Now, again, this is just a sample of the sorts of questions I would do. But again, I take an inspiration from the success of Matt Walsh's What is a Woman documentary, taking some inspiration from the fact that Michael Dukakis uh, was denied the ability to become the president of the United States in 1988, in part because he was blown up effectively by virtue of that famous question about whether he would support the death penalty if his wife were raped and murdered by a criminal. I think there is some lessons to be learned here for the Second Amendment community about things that you can do in your community or maybe others that you know can do. And again, I do think there's a possibility for some sort of documentary type filmmaking here uh, for someone that is enterprising and interested in pursuing this. Uh, again, that's how I would be thinking about it. But again, I don't think you have to be a documentary filmmaker to do this. I think ordinary Americans that support the Second Amendment can do a lot of these questions. When, and, and by the way, it doesn't have to be in a public protest setting. These can be the exact same kinds of questions that you ask people at Thanksgiving dinner, or you can ask you know, anti-gunners or people on the fence at a bar or at a restaurant or wherever you happen to be uh, talking about these critical issues. I think having these questions uh, at your fingertips uh, are great because at the end of the day, what exactly is the plan of these anti-gunners? If they don't want to have guns to protect themselves and their family and their community, what will their plan be when, uh, again, the police are not going to show up, when there's riots in the streets, when the cops can't come in the middle of the night? What exactly is their plan? And by personalizing it to the person you're talking to, I think makes it much more effective because you're forcing them to think about the most important thing in their lives, which is themselves, their families, and their community. So you want to personalize it because they're going to be much more interested in thinking hard about the question if they realize it's their life that may be lost, if maybe the life of their family members that may be lost as they stand as they that may be lost as they stand by the side and are vulnerable and defenseless and can't fight back. I think all these things are, are, are again fair game in this topic. And again, I'm sure in the comments below, you guys can provide me with a lot of other great questions for all of, all of us to think about. But again, just uh, just something to reflect on. It was an idea I've been uh, playing with the last couple months. And I just wanted to share my inchoate, incomplete thoughts on this. But hopefully, uh, you know, some of you can uh, uh, improve upon this and uh, and do something fun with it. Okay, folks, if you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner, please do so. We'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.